Hello, everyone. Welcome today to our uh, web discussion that we are going to be covering, Collaborating Across Boundaries to Improve Population Health. Um, this is a two-day workshop that we have upcoming here in January of 2025. Uh, and today is really just an informational session, just an opportunity to share a little bit more about what this workshop is. And we hope that you also bring your questions. We are excited to be able to answer some of those that we got through registration. Um, and would welcome you throughout this process to go ahead and just use the Q&A feature here, submit your questions as needed. Um, we will be fielding as many of those as we can towards the end of this presentation and discussion. All right, and today's event is going to be recorded and it will be available after the session. Um, so you'll be able to find that. And if you wouldn't mind just while we're presenting, keeping yourself on mute um, and feel free to unmute once we do get to that Q&A portion. You're welcome to submit questions there or um, just share them out loud. As we get started, uh, one of the things that we like to do at the Population Health Innovation Lab is start with a little bit about a land acknowledgement. We want to just pause before we get started and acknowledge um, that we live and operate on unceded lands of Indigenous people across the United States. Phil is a fully remote team, and we recognize and acknowledge that um, this is a very important foundational step in honoring the Indigenous peoples that have stewarded the U.S. land across time memorial. Um, but this is really just a starting point to things. We have this opportunity to talk about land acknowledgement and then really move beyond that and discuss how we can really bring this back and center um, our work in this area to really help uplift these communities. Um, I am currently joining from Hawaii today, the traditional lands of the Namoku Eha. Um, we want you to go ahead and try to figure out also where you are um, living and working on from your area as well. We invite you to check out more on www.nativegov.org. Our agenda for today, we're going to share a little bit more about the Population Health Innovation Lab, um, what we do uh, in case you're unfamiliar with us, and then share a bit about the Phil Collective, uh, which is a brand new thing we just launched in the last several months. Next, we'll go ahead and share a little bit about the Collaborating Across Boundaries to Improve Population Health Workshop, um, go over both of those days of content, and then you'll meet the trainers today. Uh, you can already see us spotlighted here on this web discussion. And then we'll go over again some of those Q&As. So the Population Health Innovation Lab provides innovative training, research, and technical assistance designed to catalyze and accelerate community efforts aimed at enhancing equity, well-being, and systems through cross-boundary collaboration. What's really exciting is we do this in so many different ways. Um, we have a whole services page on our website that we invite you to check out. Um, but as you can see, training and research, technical assistance, and all these workshops. So we've got lots to offer. If you are unfamiliar with us, we are excited to be able to get to know you more and work with you. So the Phil Collective um, is a brand new thing that has launched uh, within, as I mentioned, the last several months. And we're really here to help empower multi-sector collaboratives, those types of groups that are working across divisions, across boundaries, across sectors that are really coming together and saying, how can we as a group improve the health and well-being and equity within our community? Um, they might be doing a whole variety of different things, working on maybe a very specific focus area or a lot of different things all at one time. But what we have noticed and seen is that there is this need to really provide targeted support to those working in this area. We've done a lot of research. We have worked with a lot of these groups. And what we're trying to do with the Phil Collective is provide an opportunity for folks to come together, um, be in learning with one another across these different groups who are doing this work, but also being given resources and tools that we at Phil have kind of curated and seen um, in order to provide you with an experience to better accelerate your work um, and to do things more efficiently, more effectively. Right now, our current offerings are web discussions. Those are kind of shorter um, discussion points and opportunities for you to engage in. We have action-oriented workshops, which this is one of those. Um, so inviting you to really be in hands-on development of things as we share information, tools, and strategies. And then learning lab experiences, where, which are really occurring over a much more extended period of time um, and allow you to kind of tackle those challenges that feel larger um, in, in a way that's more supported uh, across the spectrum. 
So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Stephanie Boltima, to share a little bit more about collaborating across boundaries. Thank you, Christina. The Collaborating Across Boundaries to Improve Population Health Workshop offers two days of hands-on teaching and learning to help you build your knowledge and skills in community partnership development, which is a foundational capability named in the Foundational Public Health Services Framework, which you see on the right-hand side of the screen. The workshop is going to be held on Tuesday, January 28th and Wednesday, January 29th. Next slide, please. This workshop is part of the Phil Collective's Foundation Forward Collection of Trainings, which are tailor-made for health departments seeking to elevate their essential public health capabilities. Since this workshop is designed to build your skills related to community partnership development, we'll focus on enhancing your ability to develop and maintain capabilities to cultivate relationships and convene partners, develop and maintain strategic partnerships with governmental and non-governmental partners, develop and maintain trusted relationships with communities, and use collaborative processes to develop health improvement plans to address identified priorities. Next slide, please. Now let's review what we'll cover throughout the workshop. The first day emphasizes applying collaborative theories and frameworks to real world public health collaboratives. Next slide. We'll kick the day off by welcoming everyone in, reviewing the workshop plan and getting to know each other. We'll spend most of the first day exploring key concepts related to collaboration for improved population health, including what we've learned from Phil's research on aligning systems for health, why strategic collaboration is needed to improve population health, which theories and frameworks from various disciplines, including economics, political science, management, and public health, can guide your community partnership development efforts. We'll then take a break for lunch before digging into the afternoon agenda. In the afternoon, we'll explore how collaboration can create positive changes in your public health system, and then we'll apply what you've learned to your own work by providing space to apply tools and resources shared throughout the day. We'll reflect on the day's content and how your knowledge, understanding, or ability in community partnership development changed throughout the day. We'll close out by reviewing key points for each learning objective and reviewing the plan for day two. We'll also hold 30 minutes after our scheduled time together for informal networking and discussion. This is completely optional though, and really just there for your benefit if you want it. Next slide, please. By the end of the first day, you'll be able to describe three main findings about how collaboration leads to outcomes from Phil's Aligning Systems for Health research. You'll be able to explain at least two collaborative theories or frameworks, provide an example for how evidence-based theories and frameworks can guide community partnership development, and name at least two new people you met. Next slide, please. The second day focuses on how community partnerships can advance health equity and be sustained over time. Next slide. We'll start our second day together by reviewing and reflecting on what we learned in day one. Then we'll spend the rest of the morning exploring how collaborative strategies can advance equity and population health outcomes and how collaborative productivity can be sustained over time. We'll take a break for lunch, and then in the afternoon, we'll have dedicated time for practical application, including creating a community partnership development plan. We'll reflect on the day's content and areas of growth throughout the workshop. We'll close out by sharing community partnership development plans, reviewing key points for each learning objective, and celebrating lessons learned and areas of growth. Once again, we'll hold 30 minutes at the end of the day for informal networking and discussion for anyone who wants to join. Next slide. By the end of the second day, you'll be able to provide two examples of actions you can take to advance equitable outcomes through your community partnerships, and two examples of actions you can take to sustain collaborative productivity. Next slide. 
I also want to note that we're offering two workshops that are similar to the Collaborating Across Boundaries to Improve Population Health workshop, which is designed specifically for health departments. The Strategic Collaboration for Better Community Health, Wellbeing, and Equity workshop welcomes participants from multiple sectors, including public health, whereas the, the workshop we're discussing today really is focused specifically on people who are working with public health departments. So this strategic collaboration workshop, which is very similar, um, but kind of a broader focus, offers two days of hands-on teaching and learning to help you leverage collaboration as a strategic approach to improving community health systems, advancing equity, and sustaining collaborative outcomes. This workshop will be available online in January 2025, um, just before the Collaborating Across Boundaries workshop, and in person in Denver, Colorado in February 2025. So if for some reason you're unable to make that January um, 28th and 29th date, I just want to make sure that you all know that an earlier date in January with similar content is available, or if you're really looking for an in-person experience, that is also available in late February. Next slide, please. So by attending this workshop, you'll gain knowledge and skills to grow your community partnership development capabilities, including knowledge about research, theories, and frameworks from various disciplines that can guide your collaborative efforts, practical examples of successful cross-boundary collaboration, and tools and approaches that they use, actionable resources to guide your collaborative work, dedicated time to apply lessons learned to your own work, You'll also gain connections with peers across the nation and a certificate of completion. Next slide, please. Thank you, Katie. All right, so we are pleased to be offering a limited number of scholarships to help nonprofit professionals, early career professionals, and individuals who identify with systemically marginalized groups to attend Phil Collective workshops. Scan the QR code on this screen to apply for a workshop scholarship Please make sure to submit your application by Monday, December 16th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Applicants will be notified of the outcome of their application by 5 p.m. Pacific time on Friday, December 20th, 2024. And if you are selected for a workshop scholarship, this will cover the, the cost of um, the, the workshop registration in full. All right, next slide, please. So now we would like to formally introduce ourselves. You've heard a little bit from Christina and I already, um, but my name is Stephanie Boltima. I'm Director of Merlin or Monitoring Evaluation Research and Learning Innovations at Phil. I've been a public health professional since 2010. I worked in numerous roles most recently as a community impact specialist and then an assessment epidemiologist focused on supporting health department programs and community partners with their assessment and evaluation needs. Around this time that I was working in public health um, in the Spokane Regional Health District, specifically collective impact was taking off and we needed more answers about how to assess, evaluate and do collective impact work better. This was also around the time that accountable communities of health were being established across multiple states with Washington State being one of those. And as we were undertaking this just huge transformational work, I was finding that there was not enough evidence or guidance out there about how to do this work well. And so that led me to, to leave um, public health for a bit, go back to school and earn a PhD in public affairs focused on large scale collaboration for improved population health and equity. And so through this workshop, we are sharing lessons, not only from the doctoral research that I conducted to help fill those gaps in what I felt that I needed to be able to effectively serve my community to do collective impact type work well, but also from what we've learned and fill through our aligning systems for health research, as well as our almost decade of work in supporting multi-sector collaboratives. That's really what Phil is about and what we're here to do. And so we're not only drawing on research um, that we've done and that has been done across disciplines, but we're also drawing on our practical experience working directly with multi-sector collaboratives and providing training and technical assistance over the last decade. 
So throughout this workshop, I'll draw on my experience as a public health professional, as will Christina, and we will be um, sharing lessons learned in a way that is relevant and actionable for health departments specifically. So that's a little bit about me. Now I'd love to hand it over to Christina to share a little bit about herself as your trainer. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I'm so excited to just be here in space with you all today. And I think one of the joys of being able to facilitate this workshop with Stephanie is just um, the the human aspect that we bring to this. Like there's knowledge, there's there's background, there's research, there's all of this, but we've also lived these places and worked in these settings. And I think that's a really powerful thing that I am excited to be able to share with you all. Um, I am currently working as the director of the Phil Collective. Um, I have been with Phil serving um, multi-sector collaboratives across the U.S. for the last four and a half-ish, almost five years at this point. Uh, but prior to that, I actually worked in a health department. Um, so I spent a number of years working in a health department, really serving as the backbone for a multi-sector collaborative. Um, as Stephanie mentioned, you know, she has experience when accountable communities of health were coming about. I was working in California with the accountable communities for health model. Um, and we had actually started standing up this collaborative work before we knew there was an actual name for it. Um, so it was really kind of an organic thing that happened within the community there. Um, we were in a smaller community, a rural community, and you know, people wear lots of hats. And I think the public health department often feels that way, that you're serving in so many different roles to try to meet community needs. Um, and I saw that often within my own health department that we were, you know, collaborating and convening around tobacco and children's health and well-being and all sorts of things. Um, and at one point, you know, we said, hey, can we do this at large just as a way of working in the community? Um, and so that's kind of what I was helping stand up. I was a backbone staff person for that, um, really working across sectors to try to bring together our hospitals and our federally qualified health centers and our nonprofit organizations and local physicians, um, just all sorts of different groups and business organizations. So it was just a really neat opportunity kind of to see how things work on the ground. Um, and I think just the realities of this, I think it's one thing to come to a workshop and say, oh, do all these wonderful things. But we very much understand that there's a lot of friction and tension and challenge as you're trying to meet all these needs and change systems and ways of working. Um, so excited to be able to share that with you all. Um, have background as well in research, have also worked at the federal government. Um, so just a variety of things and perspectives to be able to bring to this workshop. Uh, but that's just a little bit more about me. Next slide, Katie. So why Phil and why now? Um, I am just, as I mentioned, really excited to share more about the fact that we have started this Phil Collective. Uh, it's really intentionally made to meet the needs of you all working in this space across sectors. Uh, we have doing, been doing this work, as Stephanie mentioned, almost a decade. Uh, we're really excited at Phil to have been serving communities across the U.S. Um, for a long time now. And I think, you know, in all of this time, we have heard and we have listened. We love to listen and we love to really cultivate meaningful relationships with the people that we are working with. And throughout that time, one of the things that we have heard time and again is that there's just this really gap in having the opportunity to understand how to do this work more effectively. And so this Phil Collective is here to be able to support that. Um, backed by research, backed by tools, not just Phil as experts, but across the spectrum of experts that we have worked with and partnered with. Um, so we're really excited to be able to have this workshop showcased under that. This is just one of many things we have in the planning pipeline. Um, and again, as I mentioned, this work, specifically this workshop, is really supported by years of research that we did from Aligning Systems for Health. Um, we worked with a over 25 different accountable communities of the slash for health, depending on what state they were in, um, in Washington and California. And so have just really seen a huge range of things that are possible, um, looking at both rural and urban and suburban, things that are across counties, things that are city based, things that are county based, um, and are going to be able to bring a lot of that knowledge and skills to you all through this workshop. Um, additionally, one of the other things that we have as a supporting factor for you in this workshop is the Powering Change curriculum. Um, this is something that we actually curated and put together a number of years ago, and we are currently undergoing a refresh for that curriculum. 
And this curriculum is full of right now, I think uh, 12, 13, no, no, 11, 11 modules. We're about to add a 12th in the near future, um, but 11 modules that really talk about some very key things that are needed in your, as you're doing this multi-sector work. Um, and the really interesting thing is we know that everybody is starting at different places and everybody has different needs for what comes first within their community, building off of the assets that they already have, as well as the gaps that they need to fill. Um, and so this powering change curriculum is structured such that you can jump in to any one of these modules and really learn and build it and make it practical for your community. And they're all connected. And so it has these opportunities for you to see, okay, maybe I'm starting in this one area around governance, but that's connected to equity in this way, or it's connected to um, our portfolio in this way. Um, so that's also going to be made available to you all. The resources that we are showcasing and highlighting throughout this um, we'll also have connection and we'll be able to pull in directly from that curriculum. So you all will receive a copy of that as well as uh, by participating in this workshop. Next slide. I think we're going to go ahead and pivot over to our Q&A session. Um, so as I mentioned, we had a number of folks who submitted questions already during the registration period for this. Um, we would invite you as well as participating right now to please again continue to add a questions here into the Q&A. We are going to go ahead and turn it over to our colleague Katie to go ahead and start fielding some of those questions, um, but please don't be shy. Feel free to go ahead and share what you are curious about. Thank you so much, Christina and Stephanie, for your presentation today, as well as your introductions for our audience to learn more about you, your experience in accountable communities of or for health, as well as spearheading other collaborative work, brings such a depth of practical, academic, and institutional knowledge. And we'd love to hear some of your answers to our questions that are piling up in the Q&A. Just as a reminder, please put your questions in the um, Q&A feature in Zoom. So we have um, our first question is, um, will session recordings or resources from the vir virtual workshop be accessible afterward? Christina or Stephanie, I'm not sure who would like to answer first, but please let me know. So I'll go ahead and just share. Yes, the plan is to make these things available. Um, so we will have an opportunity for you all to get these recordings, um, to get the resources. Those things will be made available to you um, after the workshop occurs. Great, thank you so much, Christina. I'll jump right into our next question. Will participants have the chance to work on real life collaborative projects during the workshop? I'll go ahead and take that one. Yes, absolutely. But you are the one bringing the real life collaborative project. You know, this workshop is really intended to provide you with the, the knowledge, resources, um, and skills needed to take all of that back and apply it to your own work. And so our ask of you is that really you come prepared with maybe questions that you have, challenges that you're encountering in your own community, or maybe a new or existing collaborative effort that you're working on and you're seeking to improve how that collaborative is being implemented, or even just understand your role in the collaborative and how that community-wide effort is happening. And so we believe that you will get the most benefit out of this workshop if you're bringing your real life collaborative project to the workshop um, and, and have the opportunity to really apply what you're learning to that project as we go. Um, Christina, do you, do you wanna add anything to that? Yeah, I think the only thing that I'll add, um, and I think it's adjacent, it's a kind of parallel topic to this, um, this workshop is great if you're an individual. And I just want to add that as you're thinking about these real life problems, if you want to bring partners, you are more than welcome to bring partners to this. I think these workshops are always more effective when you're able to do this in concert with others that you're working with on these topics. Um, changing those systems and really having multiple champions to be able to do that is really important. And so while it's not necessarily required by any means, we do want to encourage that if you have others that are able to attend. Um, within your department, or you know, even as you think about this in collaboration with others, um, we welcome you to be able to do that as well. 
Great. Thank you so much, Christina. That's really helpful. And I think that will provide a lot of support to registrants who are interested in this. So my next question, which sort of aligns with the previous question, are there opportunities for follow-up support from Phil after the training, such as consulting or potentially additional workshops to help implement and refine what we learn? And Christina? Yeah, I think that this, this is such a great opportunity to speak to what is available through the Phil Collective and how we can provide support through the, through the collective. Yeah, so I'll, I'm happy to just share that I think, you know, Phil is always at large available um, to be able to provide support to folks. We do work on kind of a consultation for a fee model. Um, but I think the one thing with these workshops is that we're really interested in what is going to be effective for you. Um, having worked in these spaces, we know you're busy. We know that things are really challenging to be able to continue and carry on sometimes when you're just in the middle of all the crazy. And so one of the things that we're looking at is providing a structured space for those who are, have been participants of these workshops to be able to, to lean in on the networks that they've built in. Um, so we are considering something like a LinkedIn group where, you know, if you've participated in one of these workshops, we can add you there and you can continue to be in touch with your colleagues through that and reach out to others who are added to these kind of sessions in future. Um, so that's one thing that we're looking at um, for Phil at large. We also really just want to hear from you all. Like, what is it that you want in support for follow up? What could we be providing that's most effective for you? Um, so we are all ears to that. We would love to hear on that as well as additional trainings. Um, as I mentioned, we've got a number of things in the pipeline. Uh, through the Phil Collective, we'll also be providing, as I mentioned, web discussions. Um, those are really more short form, uh, a little bit more informational with small Q&A. Those will be available, but we also have additional learning labs as well as additional workshops in the planning pipeline. Um, so all things to be on the lookout for, but ultimately we wanna hear from you. So please don't be shy. Yes, and just to follow up with that, there is a um, submission for a consultation or an idea for a learning lab or web discussion on our Phil Collective webpage, which we can put um, in our FAQ. So that is the next question. I think we have time for one, two more questions, um, and then we'll wrap this up. Um, next question. If I am unable to attend the workshop on the selected date or dates, is there an option to transfer my registration to another participant or another event? Yes, so thank you for that. I think the one thing that we wanna clarify in answering this question is that we need one participant to be the participant who is across the workshop. Um, so you absolutely, if you prior to, if you've already registered and prior to you find out that you have some other thing and you're able to find somebody else, you absolutely can have somebody else attend in your place. We would just need to be notified. Um, you can easily do that by reaching out to us at info at pophealthinnovationlab.org. Um, so that's one thing to note, but the person who is in the workshop needs to be the person for the two days. Um, the real importance in this is that you're building on the knowledge that you've already started in day two on day one. Um, so I think it's critical that we have the same person there. Again, not an issue to be able to transfer. We just need to be able to know that ahead of time. Um, if for some reason you're unable to attend altogether, we can absolutely chat options. Um, we do have a deadline for refund. So that's available on the Eventbrite registration page. Um, after that date, refunds won't be available, unfortunately, but we do try to provide a window. So that way, if you for some reason have to um, back out of registering, you can do that minus a few fees, additional things that are kind of Eventbrite specific. So um, thank you, Katie, for that question. Thank you, Christina. And I believe we are out of time. And if we would like to wrap up our informational webinar, that would be lovely. Thank you, Katie. So thank you all so much for attending today's session. If you have additional questions after this, we are absolutely all ears. Would love if you would reach out to us. Um, you can do that at info at pophealthinnovationlab.org. As we mentioned at the top of this session, this will be recorded and available to you all. Um, check this out on the events page for this, as well as the Phil YouTube. Um, we invite you to follow us on LinkedIn, Eventbrite. Um, these are places where you'll get the latest notices. And we also have the opportunity for you to sign up for 
fill collective notifications. If you just scan that QR code, um, you'll be able to designate what you want to hear about and all of that good stuff. So thank you for attending today. Uh, we hope to hear from you all soon. Bye.